Well, hi everyone, I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, and I'm back with another kitchen counter thrift haul. This is gonna be a quick one. Um, you've already seen a couple of these things, but I have finally just got them all listed. Um, so I will tell you that uh, everything that you see on the kitchen counter is listed uh, in the Old Curiosity Shop. The link to the shop, by the way, is in the description box below. In case you're a new subscriber, uh, well, first of all, welcome. Um, and I'll just tell you that my favorite items are really from the 1920s into the 60s. Um, and that's just what we've got in front of us. Actually, mm, there's one piece here that's even newer than the 1960s. Can you spot it? Well, Two things, actually. Now let's dive in and see what's what. I found these two berry bowls um, at a local thrift store, and I immediately said, oh my goodness, they really remind me of Northwood. And I thought that they were uh, typical custard glass made by Northwood around the turn of the century, but it turns out they're high C. Uh, it's unmarked high C, but that's what it is. And it's berry bowls, there would have been a larger master berry bowl in the center and then uh, six little ones. There's only two here. These have some uranium in them and they do fluoresce under uh, black light. They're gilded, it's custard glass, and this was made sometime from the very late 1890s to about 19, two, three, four, something like that. I guess I should get the, uh, the black light out so you can see, but that's what they look like. Very pretty custard glass. Uh, no chips. Then behind them is a uh, partial range set. And these are made by the McKee Glass Company. They're from the 1930s. A range set was typically um, salt and pepper. So here's the salt and pepper. And then the other two that came with a range set would be sugar and flour. So the flour shaker is missing. Um, and then oftentimes with a range set, you would also get a drippings container, right? For drippings to collect. Uh, these should sell for mm, 15 to, excuse me, 15 to $20 each. I might get upwards of $60 for the three of them. Some of the rare ones sell for hundreds of dollars and they made these, you know, paprika, cinnamon, uh, cardamom, I think, you know, just a whole bunch of odd spices. Again, they're Art Deco, they date to the 30s and it is glass, it's not platinite. These are not marked and these are, these are original lids. People like the original lids, doesn't matter that half the paint is missing. Um, it's just great to have original lids. And collectors refer to this as stick pot. S-T-I-C-K-P-O-T. -T. All right, back there is, yes, it's too big to be an original, and it's not. 
But I don't really want to call it a reproduction because it is the Anchor Hawking Fire King uh, made in 2000 and sold in, uh, I believe it was sold in Kmart. I bought a bunch of this in the year 2000 and pots and, not pots and pans, but baking dishes and I sold all of it because I just don't, I, I didn't use it. Um, so this is the big, I think it's two and a half quarts batter bowl, mixing bowl. And you can see Fire King, I'm sorry, the Anchor Hawking Company Fire King is not a company. Someone was asking me about that. Uh, it's it's the it's the brand of oven glass that they made. So it's the Fire King line by Anchor Hawking, and it clearly says 2000 on here. This stuff is okay for the microwave. Okay, and 2.5 quarts. The original one was uh, smaller than this. They didn't make these for very long. I think there was some problems with. There was just something that Anchor Hawking didn't like about the way the glass turned out. So they only produced it, I think, in the year 2000, and then that was it. But these still have value. This looks like Hazel Atlas. I'm not sure there's no mark on the bottom. And I couldn't find it. It's one football tumbler with uh, horseshoes at the bottom. That's kind of neat, mid-century. I have two cats that have lost their Japan stickers, but aren't they cute? And I'm selling the, I have these two together in one auction, just as a pair. Now, there are no chips, there are no breaks, no repairs, no cracks. The only issue with the Siamese is she has a tiny, or he has a tiny flea bite right there on the ear. Can you see that? Right there. I'm not focusing. There. And just a little speck by his eye, but you could dot a magic marker there and you wouldn't even see that. But... Nothing broken on him. Wonderful that the tail is still on there. Um, and I like the sort of matte finish on these. Okay, so almost certainly Japan, but they just have lost their stickers. Over here, I showed you this before. This is made by the Salem China Company. Uh, it's Harmony House. It was sold at Sears and Roebuck in the 1950s. The color is called Peach, Ju Peach Jubilee or Jubilee Peach. Let's turn it upside down and see. I really like the square mid-century design with the rounded edges. It's called Main Street by Salem Harmony House. And on one of these, okay, it's called Jubilee Peach. There were four colors. I don't remember all of the colors, but I'm selling this all together as a lot. So you get 10 pieces, a cup and saucer, Two cups, two cups, saucers, two little luncheon plates, and two bowls, a berry bowl. And look at these bowls with little handles on them. 1950s. That you saw before, and I forgot to list it, but I finally listed it. It's a beautiful piece of amethyst glass. <laughs> uh, it looks black, but of course you can see now under the light it's purple. And it has a nice gold encrusted top. Bud Vase could be Ellie Smith, but a lot of folks made black glass around 1930, so I'm not sure. This piece is relatively new. It's made by Fenton. Uh, this, I think, already has a bid. Um, a really pretty vase, all hand-painted. We can see there, there's the Fenton sticker. We know it's new or newer, so we'll show you right there. Okay. And then on the bottom, we can see who decorated it. Uh, hand painted by C. Smith, and then it has the Sean K. Fenton name on the bottom. I know it, that it didn't focus very well for you to see it, but uh, that's a pretty one. Talk more about Fenton later. And I finally got the uh, mid century barometer uplisted. That has a bid already, I think maybe $15. It just has a really neat mid century look. There's no damage on this at all, and it's working perfect perfectly. Here are two shades. I think I had that listed a long time ago. This one I haven't had listed before. I, this is my favorite right here. They both take four inch fitters. They're held in place by four inch fitters is what I'm trying to say. This one is open so this one would hang and you would look up and see the light bulb. That's cool. This one over here, it has a bell shape uh, and sort of a satin glass finish, and it is really pretty. It also, it, it holds, holds in place with a four inch fitter, so those are 
some shades. Um, probably from 1910, 1915, up to about 1920 when this stuff went out of fashion as a biscuit jar with no cracks on it or no chips. Beautiful glass. Early American uh, pattern glass. Okay, and if you want to put crackers in it or sweet and low or biscuits, help yourself. It's just a really nice size and it is in really good shape. It's really pretty. Okay. And uh, let's see, two more pieces. I'm going to save my favorite two for last. This is what's called smoke glass. Uh, it's a smoky color. Get it up here to the light. Um, I have a feel. First of all, it's unmarked. Uh, it's Art Deco, and I, I'm feeling very Czechoslovakian with this piece here and not American, but I could be wrong. I, I did some research on it. Couldn't find the maker. Uh, several makers made glass like this, but it just feels very Czechoslovakian if you've handled a uh, Czechoslovakian glass. And I am very attracted to it. I hope someone else will be. It's a very heavy vas vase, <laughs> and it's just... You know, maybe that's not quite your color, uh, but I think it's elegant and sophisticated. Uh, I like it. Really nice. And there's no damage on it at all. No, no uh, water damage or anything. And then, finally, two arts and crafts era, or craftsman style, if you like. Hammered copper bookends. And featuring wonderful steamships, reminds us of the great trans transatlantic uh, steamships of the White Star Line or the Cunard Line. We could name so many different ships. Uh, of course, the Carpathia and, uh, uh, let's see, what's the one that hit the iceberg? <laughs> Just kidding. Um, anyway, I, so many different ships that, and there's no name, on, there's no... Uh, there's nothing on here to identify this two funnel ship, so it's just reminiscent of a transatlantic ocean liner steam ship. Okay, hammered copper, very arts and crafts. There's no maker's mark at all, and I have really, really looked so carefully at these, could not find anything. I so badly wanted to find uh, a, a label of one of the makers from the arts and crafts era, but could could find nothing. But uh, hammered copper, original patina, no one has polished it. They're in really good condition, and uh, I really like these. What do you think? Do you like them? All right, so let's put these back. And now I'm going to back up and say, oh, did I step on the cat? No, that was not the cat. Okay, uh, did I forget anything? I always wind up forgetting something, but I think we've got it all. Okay, uh, listen, before I go, I want to say I am working on the comments. You know, I don't know, maybe it's me, but something funny is going on with the comment section right now. When I go to read them, they jump around a lot and I uh, they're there. It's just that it's, I'm having difficulty on the uh, YouTube website getting the comments to stay still so I can answer them. But I promise you, I'm reading all your comments. I'm answering some of them, but some I just haven't been able to get to because something funny is happening. So I'm gonna try to work on that this, this afternoon. And um, so I just, you know, thank you everyone, uh, all the new subscribers and everybody who just said so such nice things about my, my little piano playing. I appreciate that too. I haven't even had a chance to, to thank anyone um, for watching that video and for enjoying that piece of music. Now, some of you asked me what was the piece I played, and it is in the, in the description box below, but it's a piece called Lavender Hills by composer Brian Crane. Okay, so uh, I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching. It's all for sale in the Old Curiosity Shop on eBay. The link is below. Have a great night, everyone. I'm Scott saying thanks for watching, and so long for now.